The Myths, Legends, Monsters, and Ghosts series contains stories born in the history and people of the states they are from. Inside each of us is a desire to seek out the unknown and explain it. The stories in this series are the result of many hours of research from many different sources. After reading this book, you can decide if you believe it or not. Stay tuned. Mystery Media Group presents Case File 35. Are listening to Mystery Media Group. Yay! George Lunsford has done many jobs from being a maintenance man to making explosives for the government. He is also an actor for many years doing indie feature films, commercials, book trailers, public service videos, and even a music video for the Steep Canyon Rangers called Longshot. George's life was changed when he was a young man. His great-grandmother passed away and her spirit visited him one night, sitting on the foot of his bed. She looked at him and said, I love you, and said goodbye. Then she disappeared. He wanted to believe it was just a dream, but could smell her scent in his room. George attended a haunted high school, and in his early 20s, he had a near-death experience from pneumonia. George also had encounters in the Bermuda Triangle, a UFO in the middle of the ocean, and many other events. George has always been interested in the paranormal and cryptid creatures. He has done a lot of research throughout his lifetime. George wrote the Legends, Myths, Monsters, and Ghosts series because he wanted to share his stories and the research that he's done from all over the United States. He wants people to know that there is so much more to the world than the little bubble we live in. Being an old sailor, George has had many adventures both on the sea and on the land. He hopes that sharing these stories will give everyone an adventure to go on. We're talking to George Lunsford. He's author of the books, Legends, Myths, Monsters, and Ghosts, and you have four volumes. Tell us about your different volumes. Well, like you said, there's four. The first one is the Southern Edition, which goes from North Carolina all the way over to Texas and down to Florida. I do about four to five stories per state. And also included for the Cherokee Indian legends. And volume two is uh, the northern states from Virginia, north, and Ohio, east. And I included Washington, D.C. And five of the stories in there were actually made into movies. The true story behind Jaws. The true story behind the Honing of Connecticut. True story of The Conjuring. Two oh. story of Bell and a two story of uh, Amityville Horror. Jaws was the most scary horror movie I ever saw as a kid. The real story is actually scarier because the first and the biggest attack actually took place in freshwater tributary. That's crazy. Wow. Um, I couldn't even have a bath or go swimming when I was little. <laughs> I thought a shark was going to get me. <laughs> Ghosts were fine, but sharks and spiders, no thanks. (laughs) All right, continue. And the third one is the Midwest, which is from Kentucky to Kansas and everything north, including uh, four or five stories from the Sioux tribe, along with, of course, it has the Dog Man of Michigan and the Beast of Bray Road. Have to have those in there. Yeah. And I believe the Mothman's in that one, too. I think it's in a northern one. But then I've got the last one, which was the west. It goes from New Mexico all the way up to Montana and everything west. And I put in five stories from the Inuit people. Well, four stories from the Inuit. And I did one better. I threw in 
I think it was six stories from overseas. I really enjoyed the last one because that's where we live. And it's fun to hear some of the stories that you already kind of know about or some of the places that you've been to. But it's also fun to learn about the ones that you haven't heard of before. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate that very much. I did too. I'm in the middle of that one right now. I just read about Big Nose George Parrot. Oh, yeah. I I just did a podcast on him. I never heard of that before. Next time I'm in Rollins, I'm going to go see that. See, my brother's in Wyoming. He's over, I think, close to Casper. Oh, really? Yeah. My daughter lives in Riverton right now, so we go over there every once in a while. Oh, cool. Wyoming has a lot of cool places to go explore. It does. Well, if you go to Rollins, you got to you gotta send me a picture of that. We did the prison last July. That was pretty fun. That was in Rollins, the mm-hmm. prison? Yeah. Was that shoe inside the prison museum, or was it another one? The shoes that they made out of George's skin. Then I remember the, seeing it. Museum. What museum? The Part of the County Museum. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out when I go there. I know that's weird, but. <laughs> Rollins is a creepy little town, which is what I like. Yeah, we'll have definitely have to go back and check that out. Okay, so I also want to hear about your radio show. Tell us about that. Well, my radio show is non-existent now. COVID killed. Oh, it, it is. Okay. I was up to 250,000 listeners worldwide, and I was in 93 countries. Wow, that's really cool. That's that's a lot of listeners. But you'd still do a podcast, right? I do, I do a podcast when I can get my computer to work. <laughs> I have that problem. Yeah, they're kind of few and far between right now, but there's I got four or five stories on there right now. What's your favorite story from your latest book i guess i kind of like the one about big nose george i really do i think it's weird that you hang a guy then make boots out of him you know it's weird. It's it's pretty it's creepy funny. and then you wear the shoes to the inauguration when you're governor I, it, it's you know it's just one of those things you just kind of laugh at and all the stuff in utah especially with the uh skywalker ranch the skinwalker ranch <laughs> yeah i am fascinated with that place I have some contacts down there and I'm like, I keep bugging them. Please let me come be part of your team because they don't have any women on their team. They need me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fascinated with that place. Love me it. Me too. I like the Alaskan Triangle too. That's you a good one. They just started a show about the Alaskan <laughs> Triangle. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it is. Very interesting. How many people go missing up there and they are never found? Well, it's a a humongous state anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. There's very, if you look at the whole whole state, there's not that much life as far as civilization there. I would love to go to Alaska and disappear. Me too. (laughs) I would love that. I'm not a fan of the snow or the 24 hours of dark. The Superstition Mountains. I've always been fascinated with that place, too. And you wrote a little bit about it. Yeah. I didn't realize there were so many murders that happened there. And the other thing is, there are mountain ranges all over Phoenix on all sides of it. Yeah. But the superstitions are the only one that's a state park. Yep. Why is that? What do you think about that? But I have a friend who has been doing some major research over there. He's come across so many glyphs, you know, the ancient writings and stuff on the walls. He has found some that nobody even knew was up there. He has found in the superstitions. Kinds. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, he's found all kinds of stuff. Wow. Is he going to make a book on it? I don't know. I think he's working on one, actually. Wow, I've been fascinated with that for a long time. So I finally went to Arizona just to check it out. It's a hot spot for UFO activity. I'm not mistaken. They had a, another pretty good sighting not about two months ago. Yeah, it didn't make the papers and everything. but uh, Maybe because they're so used to it now. A lot of the groups and stuff I'm in talked about it. That's crazy to me. I watched for it the entire time I was in Phoenix. I didn't see anything. Just a bunch of airplanes. <laughs> I really wanted to see that, but no such luck. Have you ever seen a UFO? Melissa and I were in a, a ghost town up in, in Idaho, 
And it was about 1030 at night. And we saw this thing come in and it was going really slow and it was a really bright, big light and no noise. And it just slowly went across the sky. I had some binoculars sitting on my four wheeler, so I grabbed them and we saw, what did you see, Melissa? So I could just see that there was, there's a really bright light. It was definitely in our atmosphere, no noise. And then I could kind of tell that there was a black mass around it. But as soon as it went behind a cloud, it was a definite black triangle with a big white light in the middle. And that's what I saw, you know, and I actually was just watching an episode of, um, can't remember what it's called, but it's Ben Hansen's new show. And he had gone up to Dugway to do some investigating. And that was a very familiar sighting up there. Those black triangle shaped UFOs. So mm. it's not, I mean, it wouldn't be terribly far from where we were. No. But we were also pretty close to the one in Mountain Home. And then we've got Hill Air Force Base right here too. So do you think it's a UFO or a secret military craft? So we actually saw it two nights in a row, about the same time and about the same flight path. So that kind of makes me think it might be military testing, but who knows? During the daytime, we were four wheeling up the side of a mountain and two jets blew past. I mean, just barely cleared the the mountaintop. And this is when we were in the same area. Yeah, same spot. And they said they'd come from Mountain Home, and one of the guys in the campground said that the hills there look a lot like Afghanistan, so they do their training there. But those jets were moving way faster than whatever that light was, way faster. Wow. I didn't think that light was moving as fast as an airplane. And I know it wasn't a satellite, and I know it wasn't the space station because it was going the opposite direction. Because you had the binoculars, we were able to tell that it had a black shape and the clouds helped determine that it was triangle. First night it blinked cool. out. Oh yeah. First night it, did. it blinked out. The second night it went behind the mountains. Mm-hmm. Now blinking out. That makes me lean towards UFO. Big time. It was there then gone. I just don't know. It was crazy. Wow. But two nights in a row, same spot, same pattern. I see really strange lights in the mountains to the left of my house, which would be in the general direction of where Skinwalker Ranch is. And I, they're just weird lights. I don't even know how to explain them, but they're not craft like that I know of, you know. Walker Ranch, yeah, you gotta have a wonder about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, I love a good UFO story, man. It's my favorite. Well, me too, I like them a lot. My wife, we was coming back from Chicago with 37,000 feet in the air. And she saw something. It was just this shiny, it was like a cigar off from the plane. And she was watching it, and I started watching it. And it was keeping up with the plane. I mean, it was just out there, no wings, no trail, nothing. All you could see was a silver cigar. Hmm. And then she reached down to get her camera, and it was gone. Of course, you can never get a good picture when you want. When I was in the military... We was out dead in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Nothing on sonar, nothing on radar, nothing. I mean, there was nothing around. And about eight miles from the ship, we could see this, it was like a disc with the lights around it. And it was moving back and forth over the water. No, nothing to see. Almost like it was looking for something. And it never, nothing ever picked up on radar, nothing ever picked up on sonar. And we had everything out 15 miles. And there was nothing ever showed up. Five minutes. And all of a sudden it stopped and it shot straight up in the air and disappeared. Man, I'd love to see something like that. I would too. <laughs> but it's kind of scary that you can't even pick it up on radar. Oh, no. We, we never picked anything up. They kept asking us, is it still there? Is it still? Yeah. Well, we can't see it. <laughs> crazy. So what got you started in collecting of stories and deciding to put books together? Well, I was acting for about 15 years on the side of my regular jobs. And I got this, it got too political and too crazy. So I decided to do something different. And I had already been talking to my friend out in uh, Louisiana because I had wrote a 
a script for a uh, guy who was the crew chief for Richard Petty. I mean, uh, Dale Earnhardt and Dale Jarrett and some of them. And I wrote his story out as a script. We were waiting to find out if we were going to be able to sell it or not. He said, you know, I, I, we got talking. I told him I was going to write a book. He said, well, what are you going to write it about? So, well, when I was a kid, my grandfather and my parents would well, sit down and tell us tales about what happened in our area. You know, different stories that happened. And, of course, being insane children, we went out to find out if they were true and go to find, inspect everything and check everything out. And we don't have that anymore. We don't have that passing down of stories and knowledge like that. So I wanted to give a little bit back. I wanted to put it out there for everybody. And That was some of my best times as a kid. We actually used to go up to Duchesne, which is not far from where Skinwalker Ranch is, because our uncle lived up there. We'd stay and he would tell some pretty crazy stories. And I remember one time my mom was like, okay, Melissa, it's time for bed. I don't want you to get scared. And so I pretended to go to bed, but I actually sat in the hallway and listened. Do you remember those stories, Mike? Oh, yeah. He had some great stories. I think a lot of that might have been what got me interested in everything. That's what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to get people. I, I got this kid. I work with his dad and he fell in love with my books. He comes there every time I have a signing. He's there. He gets every book. So my last one, because he's been such a good kid, I went ahead and give him my last book. I signed it and everything to him and sent it to him. That kid was tickled to death. Oh, I he bet. Great. That's cool. He made it all worthwhile to do them. <laughs> right? And you just have that one? <laughs> that one person that's excited to see you. Yeah. <laughs> that's always cool. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, halfway through your book, because it takes me so long to read it, because I'll find something like the Ur- Uraka Mesa. Is that, is that how you say it? I think so. And then I'll go look it up because I want to see what it looks like. And so it takes me so long to get through those. But and he that, highlights everything and puts notes in the margins and bookmarks. Right. I love then that. I drop the book and yeah. But it's nice. That's why I like a real hardback or a real paper book. So I can do the same thing. That hole in the wall in Casey. I've been trying to find that so I can go visit it too in Wyoming. <laughs> I wanted to see that one, too. I've never heard of that. So that was a cool story. Well, the good thing is, if you go to my website, especially, my wife just put a new thing in there where you can actually go in and contact me quickly on it. Hey, would you look at that? It says email George. (laughs) I'm on it right now. George, where do you live? Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, you're in North Carolina. Oh. I was going to ask you some questions about the Utah stories. There was one that I hadn't heard of. The Devil's uh, Highway and Route 666. Oh, I've heard Utah. of that one, but I want to go. Yes, that is on my bucket list. I've traveled part of it, but not the cool part, I guess. I love the picture on that one, by the way. Thank you. It's really cool. So a lot of our listeners are from Utah and Idaho and Wyoming. And so I'm sure that these stories would be very interested to them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Devil's Highway. I know there's a lot of UFO sightings over that, too. There's a lot of bad things happening on that. (laughs) I mean, I read a a story about ghosts being in the car. And that's happened to me before, but not on that highway because I've never been to that highway. So (laughs) You've had a ghost in your car? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, tell us about that. I'm weird. I died one time and I came back. So I kind of get a different view of things that other people don't really see. I can see sometimes and I can drive down the road and I'll get a feeling and I can feel somebody beside me and I can look and there'll be somebody there and then they just go away. And this wow. just started happening after? After I die, after I died, you have a pneumonia. Wow. So I'm actually a parapsychologist and I did my dissertation on near death experiences. And so they fascinate me. Would That's you cool. would you mind sharing it? Sure. Yeah, that would be sure. cool. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with me. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm just uh, I'm a I'm a magnet for things to happen to. So sounds I like was, we'd be good friends. I was in my twenties, and I am very hard headed about going to the doctor. I hate going to the doctor, 
and I got sick. And on first doctor, I went to sick. And on first doctor, I went to, and she said, oh, you just got, you just got a cold. You're fine. Well, a week, it was a week or a week and a half later, I ended up in the hospital. One of my, one half of one lung was completely filled up with fluid. Almost, uh, almost half of the other lung was almost filled up with fluid. I had anywhere from 105, 104 fever, and I couldn't even stand up. I couldn't hold my hands up, my head up, or nothing. When they finally took me to the hospital because I wouldn't go, and uh, they admitted me to the hospital, started me on all kinds of fluids and all kinds of stuff. And I think it was the first night, or it may have actually been the second night. I really don't remember that part of it. But I was laying there. And I felt somebody beside me. I looked and there was a woman, an older woman standing beside me, my bed. And I wasn't scared or nothing. I just looked at her and I said, hello. And she said, hey. And I sat up in the bed and I started talking to her. Well, other people started coming through the walls of my room. And the clock had stopped. Nothing on the clock was moving. The second hand wasn't moving or anything. And I got up and I looked back and my body was still in the bed. And I was talking to the lady, and she told me her name, and I talked to all the people that come in. I told them, well, there was somebody standing in the corner of the room. It was kind of dark. And he took a step out, and you could see outline like looked like wings on his back. He held his hand up, and there's a little spot of light popped up. And all of a sudden, it went boom, and it made it like a portal, a round portal of light. And all these people started, they, they was telling me by and they walked in, started walking into this light and disappearing. And I thought, well, I guess I'm one of the lights. So I started to work light and she grabbed me and she said, no, no, you need to stay here. It's not your time. And I said, why? She said, it's okay. You need to stay here, get back into bed. So I went back over, I sat down on the bed, went to lay down and she waved at me and stepped into the portal. And when she did, it all disappeared. And I laid back down and all of a sudden I heard all these alarms going off and the door comes slamming open and people come running in my room. And I just looked down and said, what are y'all doing? And they all stopped. I mean, they stopped in their tracks. Well, they all left except for one nurse. And I asked her who that old lady was. And I was just telling her about it. And she just, I mean, she, she completely sheeted out white. Her face did. And she said that woman had died in that bed before I got there. And I told her about the other people by name. And all them people had died in the hospital recently. Wow. Wow. That is crazy. It was crazy. And it's nothing you would have known. No, I didn't know none of the people. So your wow. view of the other side has completely changed. You've seen a glimpse of it. Yeah, I've looked through the veil. Yeah. That's an interesting story. It is. To me, it's crazy how all these near-death experiences, I mean, everybody has kind of a different story, but they're all basically the same. The most amazing thing of the whole event, even now, it's extremely comforting and calm and this feeling you ever had in your life. Yeah, that's what they've all said. To me, the near-death experiences are some of the best proof we have that life exists, Mm -hmm. especially when you're just telling stories like you did where you wouldn't have known this lady, what she looked like or her name or that she just died. No. So the only way for you to know that was by experiencing what you experienced. It was very comforting. Good to hear. Very interesting. Now that we've gone completely off topic, I guess, but that was a really cool story to hear. I guess people hope. I agree. I want to talk about some of the favorite stories you had in Utah, Idaho, and Wyoming, because that's where a lot of our listeners are from. There are so many good stories. And like I said, I love the one about Big Nose George. Uh, it's just it's just a funny story to me. You know, you've lived a, r- a mean life when somebody makes boots out of you. And then you got Devil's Tower. I love the legend of the Devil's Tower. About the little girls and they, the earth rises up and that falls down. I, that, I love that stuff. Of course, Skinwalker is my favorite of Utah. It's the biggest thing everybody talks about in Utah is that. Mm-hmm. Me too. That's my favorite. Of course, the legend of John the Baptiste yes. was pretty good too. I liked it. 
I've actually um, wanted to do a an investigation out there on Antelope Island and tell his story. That's on my my bucket list too. That'd be fun. Yeah, I think so. I like the Bear Lake monster. That like actually that. hits pretty close to home. Bear Lake is about forty five minutes from our house. Oh, really? Uh huh. We go there every summer. And there are so you look for the monster every summer. I do. And I know ne- I've never seen it. I mean, I've seen monsters out there, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. Usually it's just our kids. Yeah. It's just our kids. <laughs> that, but the lake is huge. And that, you know, the middle of it is so deep. You just don't know what could be there. Our university up here, Utah state university has a huge folklore library. And most of the stories that are in that folklore library are around Bigfoot or the Bear Lake Monster or the Nunnery or St. Anne's Retreat. I have heard that one. We're going to do a podcast on it next month. Yeah. If you're from here, it's the place to go to. It's probably the most haunted place in Utah other than Skinwalker Ranch. But Skinwalker Ranch is a whole plethora of things going it's on. A- with paranormal, it's UFOs, it's fun happens there. So, so we were talking about the Bear Lake Monster. Michael, have you heard of it? Oh, yeah. They do a big festival every year. The really? Bear, mm-hmm. They have all these activities going on. There's a parade. They do like a... For the monster? Yeah. And people oh, will make doing? floats that look like the monster, different versions of it. And they'll go through town. And they have like an Arctic plunge where people will jump in the freezing water. Stuff like that. Mm. It's pretty cool. I need to get to Utah. That's a fun place. Cold water, though. So <laughs> <laughs> it's so diverse because you've got the mountains and trees and stuff up north, and then you go down south, and you've got the red, deserty canyon lands and the arches and all that. It's fun. got a lot of neat stuff. It really does. So does yeah. Idaho. That's where we were both born and raised. I live in the mountains of North Carolina, which is on the far western side of the state. You go to the far eastern side of the state, you're at the ocean. So you kind of got either side you can go to. And uh, I'm, an, I'm an old squid, so I love the ocean. You like the water? We followed a hurricane up to Canada. We had 40, 50, and 60 foot seas. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That would up, scare me. And it'd go down to the water, the whole front of the ship would go underwater. And oh my gosh! Back up again. <laughs> uh uh-uh, uh, no thanks. It's not bad. It really isn't. <laughs> you can do it after a day or so. So you know. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think I can. Do our that. our water came in the form of snow. So yeah, that's what we're used to. Yep. But unfortunately, I am here at home, so <laughs> not like y'all get. Y'all get feet of snow. <laughs> we get inches. Y'all get feet of snow. Get feet. <laughs> So out of all the monsters, myths, and legends, what is the one thing that you're always drawn to? Bigfoot. Uh, Me too. I actually went on two Bigfoot hunts this year. You did? Where? Going to. I'm going down. Oh, you're going to. to. The guys from Bigfoot 911. They're a group in uh, Marion, North Carolina, at the bottom of the mountain. They've invited me to go to a Bigfoot hunt. Another guy last night. He wants me to come out to his house because he's had Bigfoot around his house last week. He had a footprint picture of one. It looked like it was about 18 inches long and about probably eight inches wide. Wow. Huge. Have you ever had a sighting? Not a Bigfoot. I've done, I've saw ghosts, I've saw UFOs, I saw a weird stuff out in the ocean and all that, but I've never seen Bigfoot. Same here. I had it on my bucket list this summer that I was going to see one. Like, you know how you do your vision journals and your vision boards? My top was, I'm going to see a Bigfoot. I'm hoping to this year. I hope you do too. We'll definitely know about it. (laughs) Yes, please. Michael loves Bigfoot. Oh, I'm a huge fan of Bigfoot. How can you not? I mean, he's he's the coolest character out there. You can see me, but you can't get close enough to focus on me. <laughs> He's he lives smart. the lifestyle that I would like to have. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody bothered me. I bet people bother him all the time because we're we're just encroaching on his land more and more. Well, that's true. More yeah. and more sightings. But to me, I live 
Bigfoot is more believable than a lot of the other legends or the other cryptids and stuff out there. Yeah. Bigfoot's more believable than a giraffe, to be honest. It really is. A platypus. <laughs> I live about an hour away from where Dr. Meldrum teaches school. Oh, really? And Melissa, yeah, Melissa and I went down to his laboratory a couple of months or so ago. It was like going to Christmas Candyland. I mean, it was my mouth hit the floor. My kids were teasing me because I was so excited. He was like, it was, <gasps> Dr. It was so much fun. I we talked jealous. for three hours and it just went by in a matter of seconds. Uh, it was so I'm much fun. So, I am so jealous. It was so cool. He has so many footprints and he's got hair samples. He's got a butt print, uh, hand prints, all sorts of cool things. Did, is he the one that had the body print where it was curled up? If he does, we didn't see that. I don't think so. Somebody had one. Well, I don't know who it was. I remember seeing on TV that they had found a, they had made a cast that looked like one had laid down. I forgot the guy's name who did that. That's yeah, okay. I've seen it. I've I've seen video and stuff, but I've never. I don't remember the guy's name or nothing. He even has the the cast. Uh, and I forget the guy who did it, but he put a jar of Nutella out and that Bigfoot stuck his fingers in there and pulled out the Nutella. And so his this guy's wife made a print out of that. And you can see the fingernails and the fingers off of this. Wow. He even has that one sitting on his on his shelf. The fingernails are huge. I'm like, holy cow, you so detailed. Yeah. That is cool. That is so cool. Oh man. I'd love to see all that. Well, come, oh, it was cool. come for a visit out West and we'll take you up to his lab. He's a really cool guy. Very laid back. Loves to talk about Bigfoot. Who does? <laughs> Getting excited right now. And that was two I know. months ago. I know. <laughs> well, you'll have to let us know how your Bigfoot hunts go. If you see one, you'll have to put that in your next book. Your sighting. Well, my next book, I'm going off the folklore stuff for a little bit. I'm Are you? Do- some strange stories in my head. So supernatural horror. And my main character, she is just bad. <laughs> That'll be cool. That'll be a cool read. Some interesting ways of killing people. I'll put it to you that way. Does she make boots out of people's skins when they die? Actually, they'd, they'd be luckier if she made boots out of them. <laughs> that only happens in real life, right? <laughs> Well, George, I, we've really enjoyed talking to you. Is there anything else you want to ask, Mike? No. When you come out, they'll let us know, and we'll go to Meldrums and visit with them. We can go to Skinwalker Ranch, too. Yeah. That would be awesome. You guys uh, have been I've enjoyed this tremendously. <laughs> we really appreciate you being on our show. Not too short not to enjoy yourself. I agree. That's right. Oh, tell people where they can find your book and your podcast. They can go to author georgelunsford.x10host.com. And all the information is there because I just pulled it up. Then you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's cool. You'll you'll enjoy it. It's been fun. Thank you all very much. It's really much. nice to meet you. Good luck with your nice next book. You. Let nice us know when you. it comes out. I hope you see Bigfoot. I hope you do, too. If I do, y'all, I'll definitely let send you the message. Please. Well, we got yeah, our email please. now, so. <laughs> please. If you enjoy our show, please like, subscribe, and leave a five-star review. We will be introducing other Mystery Media Group guests in our upcoming episodes, along with weekly bonus material. If you'd like to see more pictures and evidence from our adventures, visit www.destination-mystery.com. You'll find a link to our blog, as well as a link for merch and contact information. Until next time, find your own destination. Solve the mystery. This is a production of Mystery Media Group. Yay!